Hey guys, this is Will Doggett. I work at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale in Ocean's Edge School of Worship, and I am our resident Ableton Ninja. So I do a lot with Ableton Live and I use it on our for our services, weekend services, and our Wednesday services. And I'm uh, going to show you some cool stuff that we do with that today. But I'd like to introduce you to my partner in crime, Mr. Rich Belge. Hey guys, my name is Rich Belge, as Will pointed out, and. Uh... I do all the lighting and I take care of all the uh, environmental projection stuff as well as uh, audio engineer for Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale. And we're going to just put together a video here where we walk through how we control the environmental projection from Ableton Live from when we do nights of worship. And this allows us to have each lighting cue, as you can see we have a lot of them, play perfectly with the song every time, every service. So the first time we did the video stuff, we just used, uh, I think we did ProPresenter, is that right? Just yeah. ProPresenter. Um, and it worked, you know, worked pretty well, but we had to have someone back of the uh, lighting board, you know, manually uh, launching each clip. There were a couple that were synced up, um, you know, to a click track originally, and we were using a click track on the stage using Ableton. But as we started to do this and considered doing this more, um, we realized we needed something that could be synced up. And so that's when Rich and I started the conversation about can we use Ableton Live somehow sync Ableton Pro Video Player? So as we started talking about how to sync up Ableton and Pro Video Player, we obviously knew we needed to do it with MIDI. Uh, we didn't want to run a really long MIDI cable back to the lighting booth. Um, so we started talking about potentially doing it wirelessly. One of the great things about using a Mac computer is we have the ability to do a wireless network MIDI connection. It's all built into the Mac and it's incredibly, incredibly easy to do. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. Um, and on basically the way to get to it, a lot of people don't even know where to get to it. I always start by just going to Spotlight and just typing in MIDI. And that's probably going to be your first or second option. Um, and then it takes you to your audio MIDI setup. Now this is one tricky thing when you open it up by default. It probably will open up to a page that says audio devices or it may open up and not show anything. So if you go up to um, Window and you can do hide audio window if you want to, but make sure you do show MIDI window. That's gonna be huge. Then we see the MIDI studio window pop up and our second option there is network. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a MIDI connection over a network. So this could be you know over like a Cat5 cable, ethernet cable, but we're doing it wirelessly. Um, so for this to work, you've gotta either be on the same wireless connection or you can create your own wireless network um, using your Mac, which that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. But for now, Rich and I are both connected to the same network, and we'll show you here in a second. And then all I'm going to do is just double-click on network, and that's okay. It's easy easy to fix. And by default, your your screen's probably going to open up like this, where you're going to see um, you know something where it says My Sessions, and there's nothing there. So I, I basically need to create a network MIDI session. And so all I'm going to do is press that. It gives me Session 1, and then when I click that, you'll see over here it's Enabled. Um, and I basically created, I don't need to change anything over here, local name, session one, my bonjour name is Will D, which is the name of my computer. And then what Rich is going to do is he's going to connect to my network over on his computer. So he clicks my name, connects, and then in participants, I now see Rich Belgi's MacBoo zero milliseconds show up. So that's basically showing that Rich is connected to um, my computer. And again, just to show you guys, if we click here, we're both on the same network. So CCPVT is our network here. Um, if you have slow wireless or unreliable wireless, you may not want to do it this way. You may want to create your own. But again, that's another another conversation for another day. So we now are basically connected wirelessly over MIDI. Let me show you guys how I set up MIDI in live to send MIDI to Rich and um, Pro Video Player and then we'll show you guys how that works. So if we look over into Live and if you're not familiar with Live this could this could basically be done with um, with any program honestly but uh, I'm using Ableton Live this is what we use for our, our click tracks our loop stuff this is what I know really well so in Live if I go into my preferences pane uh, preference pane here I go to Live preferences or command commas our shortcut and then we go to our MIDI sync tab and you see uh, the MIDI ports that I have my input and output. I have network session one. All I really need to do for this one is I'm just going to turn track on and that's going to give me the ability to route my MIDI out over the network session uh, connection. So all you got to do is go and turn track on and then hop back out of here. And I basically created a MIDI channel. There's no sounds loaded in um, and I'm just using kind of a dummy MIDI channel. 
And then MIDI 2, you can see I've got that set to network session 1. And we're transmitting on channel 1. So we have 16 channels of MIDI we could transmit on, um, but we're just transmitting on channel 1. Um, I've got, you know, again, if you're new to Ableton Live, you've got to make sure your monitor is set to auto and your record enabled or set your monitor to in. Um, that's more in-depth live stuff, but get that set up. And then basically all I'm doing, I'll show you guys from scratch, is I'm creating a MIDI clip. Um, and then I have uh, corresponding notes um, starting. We found that zero for some reason doesn't work. So if we go all the way down, C negative two is going to equal zero for rich. Um, but we have to start on one here. So C sharp negative two, my MIDI note, basically equals one on Pro Video Player. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So all I really need to do is just create a note there and I drag it out. So basically when I click this, that's going to send this value to Rich. So um, by default, that's really not going to do anything until Rich takes us through what he does on his end in Pro Video Player. And the only thing I'll point out is when Will hits a note, you'll see this latency bar here show up so you know that you're receiving that note to the MIDI network setup. So when you go to troubleshoot something, I would check here first because you'll see this uh, red line show up. So you know that the Mac itself is receiving the MIDI command. And then when you go to Pro Video Player, now you can get into the MIDI settings and at least you know that the computer is receiving MIDI. There's a couple steps in Pro Video Player. One obviously is the global receive MIDI signals. And then you have to configure it. And uh, this takes a little time, but it's not too bad. Basically, Pro Video Player will let you accept up to 80 different MIDI notes. And what it does is it corresponds this grid to the grid that you see here in the clips view. So if he hits note one, in this case it's a blank slide, if he hits note two, it'll be this video, note three. So MIDI isn't a triggering a specific clip, it's just triggering a clip that's in this position. And maybe that's probably why zero doesn't work now that I think about it, because there's nothing there. Yeah, it makes perfect so, sense. Uh, Clip 5, or note 5, would just trigger this video here. And so, it's a little time consuming to set this up, but basically you click learn MIDI, and if we needed to have note 41, we found it a little easier and re more reliable to, to type that in. And as you can see, it'll take a little time if you have a lot of clips, but in theory, once you save it, it's saved. The other cool feature is to make sure Pro Video Player is actually receiving notes. When you're in this view, you can see this. So now if Will hits a uh, just note a 7, yeah. we saw that it received 7, and in the background it went to video clip 7, which just happens to have sound. <laughs> and your computer is about to take off. <laughs> and my computer is going crazy. Let me just turn that down. That's fine. So... That's a great way to, to troubleshoot and make sure that everything's working correctly. Start by making sure that you're seeing a MIDI note in the MIDI network setup. Once that's working, then you can go to Pro Video Player and make sure you're receiving notes. Yeah, so let me show you guys really quickly. We've got um, these seven clips set up in live. And again, they're blank clips. There's no sound attached to them. MIDI uh, at its core is just zeros, zeros and ones. There's no sound attached to MIDI, which is kind of nice. But um, I just have this clip one, so I can click this, and you can see on Rich's computer it'll launch clip one. Uh, I can go to clip two, and that will launch clip two, clip three, so on and so forth. So there's a couple of different ways to set this up. Uh, one, if you're working in session view in Ableton Live, which is the view we're working in, you can basically build a set list, um, and you can have each of these clips correspond to uh, sections of your song or songs in your set list and uh, so if I basically set it up like I would maybe on a Sunday morning um, I could enter in my tempo you know for my songs and let's get another one in here get these plugged in I can do a key assignment which looks like I already did for song one and song two hypothetically speaking when I'm ready to start song one I could press one on my keyboard it's gonna start playing song one and it's gonna launch video clip one so that could be a full video clip uh, song two when I press that we launch the click track in the loop uh, for the band and play video too. Um, but the way that we've done it is actually throughout um, every song we have multiple cues. 
And um, so we, we found it's really nice to actually work in arrangement view, which is the other view in live. Um, and we can actually lay them out a, across a timeline. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. If I press tab, it's going to take me over to arrangement view. And I actually have a loop loaded in here. Um, I'm going to keep the volume you know, turned off for now just so you, you guys can hear, hear me talking and we don't need to hear it. But basically this is um, this would just be any piece of audio you have. This is a song that we do a lot, Mighty to Save. So what I could do is um, Rich and I and uh, you know work together and let's say we pick some videos we want to use and let's say we we got seven clips so let's say we got seven video clips we want to throw into this song. So what I can do is actually take these clips that I created and I can just copy them or cut them and uh, paste them over here just so I have them. Then what I can do is uh, actually lay all these clips out exactly where I want them to come in. So this is a really really cool. Uh, way to do this and it's really nice to be able to listen to the song and line it up and say okay we want the second video clip to come in right on uh, measure three let's have clip three just for the sake of time have it on five let's have seven here have this guy on eight and uh, so on and so forth so you guys can see we can lay this out across the timeline we can be listening to the audio the beautiful thing about this is we found on a couple clips because of the size of them um, and because of you know just some inherent latency and, and using MIDI stuff which happens no matter whether you're doing it wirelessly or plugged in um, there'll be maybe a bit of delay so kind of doing this a couple times we found if I want this clip to come in right on measure three then I may nudge it you know to where it's actually beat four of measure two and that way it comes in on three or if that's a little too early I can move that back so what's nice is we kind of do an initial setup and then we'll test it and play through and we'll you know check and see if something needs to be nudged a little to the left or a little to the right. It's all really visual, really easy to see. But uh, you can see, as soon as I press play, um, check it on Rich's computer how, depending on the, the spot and the section of the song we're in, uh, it's going to launch that corresponding uh, video clip. So I'll turn the, uh, turn the audio on now. And um, it doesn't matter if you hear it, so I'll leave it turned down low. But uh, check out as we play throughout the song as those videos launch. And again, that's that's a lot of video changes for a section of a song. So that's just a very, um, you know, very straightforward example of how you can do this. But uh, this makes it pretty pretty easy and pretty nice to see everything laid out in a very um, kind of logical way, very linear way. Um, and again, the beauty of Ableton Live is we can hop around. And so if this is um, measures one through four, our intro, and then measure four is our verse, you know, I can create a couple locators here which again this is you know a little more advanced Ableton Live stuff but I can create locators and then as we play our intro uh, it's gonna play those clips and then by default we're supposed to go back to our verse right but if we get here and we want to go back to the intro I can click that and then it's gonna launch those clips over again so those, those video clips are always gonna follow our click and are always gonna go where we go in the song so we have the ability to go back and again we're not worried with MIDI timecode and things getting off time code, it's always going to be synced up, which is which is really, really cool, kind of beautiful thing. The other thing, too, is if I change my tempo, um, it's automatically, you know, the song may speed up, but the, the clips, the video clips are going to stay in the same spot of the song. So I can change uh, the tempo of my song, everything's still going to launch the same. But it really gives the band the ability to play uh, with loops and not just two loops and be locked in. Hey guys, just an update. After Will and I recorded the the main part of the video uh, a couple days ago, we contacted Renew Vision, who make Pro Video Player and Pro Presenter. We had some feature suggestions for Pro Video Player, and one of their developers uh, followed up with me and sent me a beta of the next version of Pro Video Player with some tweaks to the MIDI functionality. So I just want to show you those real quick. The first thing and what was most important for us for our next night of worship is that there's now more than 80 uh, MIDI clip, MIDI notes that you can assign to video clips. Uh, you can actually enter in the number of rows you need. The number of columns is determined by the size you have 
your screen set to, the, the thumbnails. I just happen to have mine set to where there's 10 across. That's why there's 10 on the grid here. And then I manually entered 12 rows. And so now I can trigger up to 120 clips from 120 different MIDI notes. Now the other cool thing that they added is this auto populate. So if I reset all, that clears everything. Auto populate automatically fills in everything so I don't have to manually type in which I would think for 99% of the time that's what you're going to want anyway. I'm sure there's times when you want would want the notes to trigger things in a different order or maybe you want more than one note to trigger the same clip but for what we're doing this is perfect. So I just wanted to add this and uh, show you guys. I'm not sure when this will be officially released but I'm sure it won't be that long.